Welcome to Fact Finder Investigates. I'm Brandon Stitt. A warning as recovery from last weekend's storms continues. Newton police are cautioning homeowners of the possible scams as they look to make repairs. Fact Finder reporter Rachel Hallam breaks down what you need to know so you don't fall for it. Homeowners cleaning up after weekend storms now facing an additional challenge this week, avoiding scammers. It's something the Newton Police Department is now warning people about on Facebook. But for some local contractors in the industry, this unfortunately isn't new. Uh, but you do have some uh, amongst the uh, industry that will you know, try to get that first check out of the homeowner after the insurance or try to uh, capitalize on a catastrophe. Phillips with Shield Roofing in Newton says they intentionally don't go door to door and hope this opens the eyes of his community to the scammers around them. People that poach on the uh, vulnerable or the elder, elderly people, those people might not be informed. And when you have a door knocker that just kind of goes around and says that they'll do something for you, but, you know, they're just there for the money, it's not a good look. The Better Business Bureau says they see scams like this when scammers pose as real contractors, often scamming people attempting to fix their house right away. What we see time and time again is after storm damage, uh, you have contractors, some legitimate, some not, who swoop into impacted areas to provide uh, services or not. Now, should you encounter tree or roofing contractors at your door, local roofers and Newton police have some tips to ensure your safety. Definitely check them out. Uh, look at reviews on Facebook. Make sure they're licensed, insured. But reach out to somebody that you trust that has already had work done and see uh, how their experience was. If you'd like to make sure that your contractors that you hire to repair your home are insured or licensed, you can contact City Hall or the Better Business Bureau. You can find that information on the 12 News app or our website. A fact finder alert so you don't fall for it. The Winfield Police Department is warning that someone is posing as a city utility. In a social media post, the police department says an automated system is making contact with residents in reference to their utility bill. The city of Winfield says that it does not use an automated telephone service and they will never call and demand payment or information over the telephone. If you receive this call, hang up. Sedgwick County is submitting a federal grant application to help with DNA case backlogs at its forensics lab. The county's forensic science center has a backlog of around 35 cases. The lab's director says the county is asking for more than $300,000 from the Bureau of Justice Assistance. That would help pay for better equipment, training and maintenance on current equipment. If the grant is approved, the lab's ability to analyze more complex cases would increase. I think the trend has really been that our district attorney's office, and in light of what the jury's expectations are, are asking us to test more items. And those items are getting more complicated. It's not just a blood stain anymore, it's a touch item. It's items that are more challenging to get DNA profiles from. And if that grant is approved, the lab would attempt to get the equipment orders in between October and December before the 2024 budget closes. People who drive this area call it dangerous. A 22-mile stretch of highway of K254 between Wichita and El Dorado. The highway is now another step closer to final plans for improvements. KDOT hosted one of its final meetings this week where plans to make the highway safer were presented. I spoke with those living near the highway who say they're happy to hear it. Car after car after car. And crash after crash after crash. D. Rhodes lives near 254 in Greenwich. After over 30 years, she's seen it all. Extremely bad crashes. Uh, a lot of them are during the day, and it's people in a hurry, people not paying attention. Crashes aren't the only concern with this 22-mile stretch of highway between Wichita and El Dorado. It's also the number of people using it each day. It was about 6.30 in the afternoon. And normally that's not a peak time, but I had to wait seven minutes to get on 254 to go west. Wheat harvest also has an impact on this heavily traveled road. So you'll have semis that will be taking uh, grain in. Uh, then you have farmers in trucks that will be taking grain in. KDOT has been meeting with the public on plans to improve the highway. 
Dave Seats heads up the K254 project. We've done a lot of research and we found that um, we think it's going to continue to grow out here. Um, we're going to see more houses, more businesses out here. At the latest meeting in Benton, KDOT presented short and long term plans. The short term includes safety improvements like changes to turn lanes, lighting, and adding rumble strips. But it's the long term plan that will have the greatest impact. Our long term plan for K254 is a freeway section which includes interchanges, overpasses, and removal of direct access from the highway other than at those interchange locations. The final plans for K254 will be presented to the public later this summer. As far as when the highway will officially become a freeway, a timeline has not yet been established. I thought she had been in a car accident. An ATV uh, crash never crossed my mind. I use these products. I wouldn't want them going away at all, but I do want to make sure that if me and my child are in one, we're going to be safe. State laws are making it confusing for parents and children to understand ATV laws across the country. Why experts say this can be a deadly problem, next on FactFinder Investigates.